Okay, I've now opened the meeting. It is 6.34. Um, what do we have for additions to the agenda? A none from the TA. Carl, you don't have any? It's not really an addition to the agenda, no, but uh, in, con in the context of um, either the town meeting warning or the uh, discussion about managing COVID-19, we've been alerted by VLCT that there's a uh, bill working through the legislature to really give us the power to do this year what we were empowered to do the last couple of years, oh. having town meeting um, just by Australian ballot only. And I see some outlying towns like Marshfield or neighboring towns, I should say, have um, uh, asked for their folks to weigh in on that and uh, are waiting to get feedback before making their final decisions. So I think in one of those two places, yeah, we should take it up. Probably yeah, the, sure. the town meeting warning. Yeah. We, I could see us. Yeah. Say asking for feedback and then well we can talk about the details later. Right, but okay, we'll we'll just make sure we talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So it's not an additional right. Like, Got anyway. it. Um review of minutes, uh January third. I have one suggested revision, and this is on the very good in general, as usual. Um page three, the town administrator report uh the Two paragraphs above meeting schedule, Mr. Etnayer pointed out uh, the final sentence. I did not intend to uh, give any admonitions to residents about reporting, uh, but rather the language I'd like to see, and I've got an email queued up to you, Deidre, to send it off, is he added that WEC relies on people reporting outages and their automated system means that reporting doesn't take a lot of staff time. That what you said? That's not what you said, though. Right. I, think, I know. I know. I think That's why I was suddenly asking that. I, I, I mean, <laughs> well, I, you I, said it I, kind of. I've said this a number of times, but I don't remember the exact right. wording that I used in the meeting, but that's what I intended. Yeah. Uh, I do remember you saying that their smart grid isn't particularly reliable, yeah. so residents should call in their outages. So yeah. I can add that language. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're okay with adding in some of the Yes, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Carl is definitely feeling that. He's feeling that. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Uh, Anybody else have any um, corrections, additions to the minutes? Right. Notice I said additions also. <laughs> <laughs> Not just corrections. Uh, nothing else? They look good to me. Yeah. yeah. You condensed the conversation a little. That was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you really want more? Do you guys want more condensing? No, no. Some people love particulars, so you know you gotta find fine line there. Names, you know, blah blah. Okay, it looks good to me. So I think we assume the generators um, 2023 select board meeting minutes with the change recommended by Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. The minutes are approved from January 3rd. Okay, next thing on the agenda is public comment. Is that public down at the bottom? Hi. Laura and Tim. This, they don't know where cemetery? they are screening this. Is that old. may be for cemetery. Yeah, it's for cemetery, huh? Yeah. Oh, the cemetery? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I guess we don't have any public. Elliot. What's that? Elliot's out. Elliot oh. and Florence out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, discussion with town with cemetery committee to review FY 2024 budget request. Okay. We're about to talk about cemetery. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, we're a couple of minutes ahead of schedule, but. Oh, time for change. <laughs> yeah. So are you here to discuss? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Are you Howdy. here to discuss the budget for the cemetery committee? Uh, I guess so. Wow. <laughs> I thought Emily was going to be here. But you said you'd come. So. But I said I'd come. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, is that is that Tim on there? Is that Tim Lampson? Yeah. Okay. Is. is he gonna talk? Because I don't see much. I don't see much coming out of his mouth at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually. Oh, can I talk? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. This is actually Tim's wife, Flora. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi. Are you going to present something? No, I don't have anything to present. Okay. All right. Well, we'll let Elliot present then. You presenting the budget, Elliot? I, I wasn't planning on that. Oh, okay. Well, I think we what can... happened is I had some papers and you went out the door and I said, oh, and he says, Emily will have them. But yeah. do, you, do you have a copy yes. of that? Yeah. yeah. You can explain it all out. If I see it, I can probably explain it. Yeah. <laughs> Cemetery budget. Okay. Payroll. Well, no, I mean, I, it looks fairly self explanatory, but it's quite, uh, yeah. You got to increase, you got to put some posts in, more posts. Uh, yeah, we have most of the posts in the village done. Yeah. And we need to do 12 more. Uh, the uh, little cemetery on the road to uh, Adamant, I noticed it got pretty rotten. And uh, even though I hate to do anything by use, just regular posts, I think if we pay and buy posts, we should be getting pressure treatment. Yeah. Because it's so expensive to do these cemeteries, these fences. Yeah. It Do you works. concrete around the post when you put them in, or how's that working? Or you just sit them in the ground? We uh, use a uh, hand post hole digger. Yeah. And uh, we just sit them in. And, yeah. And, and they stay pretty good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we have, have to keep our fences up. Yeah. And some of them, <clears throat> I guess it was my idea to use plastic. Chain wood. Right. It's, it's, it, it isn't cheap either, but it lasts forever. Well, that's where you're using on Dottie. Is the Dottie, yeah. 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 We bought granite posts, which that was like 25 years ago. Yeah. It cost $11,000 for the posts. Right. But we they last. We're not selling that anymore. No. Um, so, the, the fences are, have been quite a large part of our budget, but that's cutting down now. Have you talked about the importance of having the fences there? Uh, well, I can tell you why there are fences around cemeteries. Yeah, please. There's a story. Yeah. Uh, back when the legislature was all farmer legislators, which it isn't now, uh, they made a rule that all uh, cemeteries shall be fenced in. Okay. Reason? They were all farmers. Mm -hmm. They didn't want animals, cows and horses running around on their graves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why way back then that they yeah. came up with that. Okay. So it's like the Robert Frost poem where the guy's pointing out that, uh, hey, this fence between us makes sense when there are cows, but you don't have cows and my apple trees are not going to come over and eat your pine trees. <laughs> okay. Some of, like the Cutler Cemetery used to have a, a steel fence all along the front of it along mm -hmm. where the county road is. Uh -huh. But during World War II, that fence was taken away for the war effort. Huh. Yeah. That's why there is no fence. Wow. Huh. Um, so, 
So is it, is it still a law then that you have to have a fence around the cemetery? That it still is in existence? I think it still is. Uh -huh. but we, we don't pay too much attention to yeah. it. But it's still people like to see some kind of a fence. Sure. So, so we do the fences. Uh, corner markers, we spent quite a bit of money. You do have to mark the corners of everybody's plot so that you can find it. Uh, and it's it's been quite a bit of expense because we <clears throat> ordered granite markers that six inches by six inches by about 12 inches. And, and I've done all of that. Uh, digging a hole, putting them in, making sure they're lined up. Uh, uh, John Boucher came up the last meeting with uh, their metal small markers, and they have a spike on them. You just drive them in. And, and these things that, well, it's taken, we get four of them, it takes me three, four months, and it costs, uh, how much was it? You're talking about the granite ones? The granite ones. Right. They take a while to get them. Uh, 250 for a set of four. Yeah. And so we have decided to use the ones you just drive into the ground. The metal ones? The metal ones. How long do they last? Forever. Oh, yeah? Well, the granite ones will too. If somebody wants a granite one, they, it's just their responsibility, right? Oh, I see. Yeah, they can buy it. So you only have 150 bucks in for corner markers, but you just said they're 250 for four. And then on your stone repairs, you've got 3,000 bucks. Is uh, that the, right? The stone repairs are, we have quite a few stones in the old cemeteries that have broken, yeah. fallen over. Yeah. And we try each year to fix as many as we can. Are you putting foundations under those? Under those ones that are tilted? Uh, only one that fell off. Oh, so you're just sticking back in the ground straight? Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry. there is a way to uh, repair them. Matt yeah. Peak has been working at that. Matt Peak, we have him working the whole thing over and see what should be done. As far as the repairs go or foundations go? Repairs and all foundations. Yeah. Uh, foundations old, are expensive, though. They're about 1200 bucks. They are, yes. Yeah. The old cemeteries, um, there's nobody we can find to get after to pay for it. Right. A cemetery like the Doty, I can find for most every grave, I can find somebody right. that can go after to pay for it. Right, but the old ones, people have passed away. And there's nobody. Nobody. So no. if I see one that's broken, it's... Yeah. We will fix it. But you're mostly going to stick it back in the ground straight. You're, yeah. You got no money really to put into a foundation if, for if somebody that passed away a hundred years ago. You hesitate to stick the pad in the ground that has names on it. Yeah, right. But yeah. Sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I'm just curious to see. So the three thousand dollars for stone repairs it says new. Are you talking corner markers? I'm not quite sure. The I think the, the new means it's a new budget item. That wasn't oh, okay. something that was presented oh, okay. previously. And the 150 for corner markers must be assuming just metal ones because they're a lot cheaper. I guess so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because the old uh, granite ones would be a lot more. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? The surveying and mapping. Oh, well, we plan to have somebody survey the back of the Dolly Cemetery. Yeah. It's been an awful scary thing. I've told a lot for years and years. Yes, now uh, John Boucher will take that over. Yeah. He knows more about it than I do. Well, he came in and asked us about it yeah. a couple of meetings ago. I have not said I'm just turning my back on him. Yeah. I'm still late. Yeah. Because if they need to know the answers to some questions, well, they do know. Right. Exactly. I pass it along. Yeah. To anyone that it would help. Yep. Uh, but for surveying, um, I think you appropriated 10,000. 
I, they were talking at our, our last meeting of public house. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about it. He came in and talked about it. It sounded like a good idea. So yeah, I think it is. Yeah. That will make Don's job a lot easier. Right. Yeah. And the one time expense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We we did the front of the voting years and years ago, Polly Colvin was with us. And uh they put uh metal stakes in the ground, but you can't see them they driven into the ground. Yeah. Supposedly you could use the metal detector to find them. Right. I tried at least three metal detectors. I've never found them. <laughs> really? Except when I used to be digging a grave, sometimes I dig into one. Hmm. <laughs> oh, so they're outside the town right away or what? I mean that they, they must be outside the town right away on the road there? The corners of the cemetery, or they go up to the town right away. Oh, um, it's not really that kind of a survey. It's no, it's not that kind of survey. Oh, it's just for the grave. It's to go through and see where you could dig a grave, right? Where there's uh, ledges that yeah. you couldn't dig. Oh, so that's the same on the back. It's not going to be delineating the property line. It's all it's doing is find out where the grave is. Find out where we could dig. And so then you'll have a map for every single grave. There will be a map. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how do you do that? How do you figure out whether there's ledge? They have some, uh, uh, I guess an, it's an electronic thing that uh, feels the ground. Okay. Yeah. They can, Supposedly tell where there's a body. Okay. Oh, good. That would be fun to do. Well, <laughs> one yeah. thing in the uh, Doty Cemetery that's quite interesting, especially to me, is that that was a cemetery back in the 1700s. Huh. And apparently, if there were any markers, farmers took them to them to build fences. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then they kind of it got forgotten that cemetery. They forgot about it until the town found out in about 1970 that the town owned that cemetery. Huh. Huh. Um, so uh, we could be digging a grave anyway in the end. Yeah. And we could find bones of a prior burial. Huh. Yeah. Uh, if I ever found anything like that. <laughs> Nobody but me would know because right. I quickly fill it in. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so, but in those old graves, like in seventeen hundred graves, would it literally be just a pile of bones growing it growing the ground? Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, it would sort of be like a green burial. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Probably with some flesh on the boat. <laughs> no, no, that's just gone by now. No, no, she was talking about <laughs> throwing it in the ground. Yeah. Bothered to scare about it. Oh, they threw it in the ground as a bot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not as <laughs> dismembered. Yeah. <laughs> I have known that in an old, very old cemetery, I don't know how I came up with it, but I have that a lot of people back then didn't have money or time. To uh, even mark the grave. Mm. So uh, a lot of them say if there's an old cemetery was with 20 graves with markers, there might be 50 or 60 that are not marked at all. Mm. Wow. And if they marked it, it might have been with wood. Right. Of they did it with wood too. Yeah, right. And that would be gone by now. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So I think we're good. I could tell you lots of things, but you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have other items to take care of, unfortunately. But this is the most interesting one. Yeah. Well, we don't know that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a possibility. But we'll keep you informed. Yeah. I'm about to get the equipment checked over. Yeah. Uh, I do all, all the mowing, except Tim and his son do the trimming. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. So I try to keep the equipment good. We have two very nice mowers, and they had too many years old. Yeah. That sounds good. 
Sounds good to me. Anybody else have any more questions for Elliot or for the Laura? Laura and Tim. Laura. Laura. All four, right. Um, thank you for having us. No, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for all the uh, explanations. Yeah. yeah. Now I got I got one other question actually. What happened to the cemetery beyond your place on the right where I I found the gravestones and the bushes oh, there? Oh, oh. Did they get hauled out of there? Uh, we found the stones in a pile. Yeah, well I found the stones actually. Oh, you we, yeah, I went up there and, and uh, found them. They're on that you, pushed off the field. You and we all agreed on a place to put the cemetery so it would never be disturbed. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. And it, it's a nice looking little yeah. cemetery. Is that off the side where it's, the stones were? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Down over the bank and across. Yeah. And, yeah. and we think that was possibly where some of the original cemetery was. Yeah. But it's just stones. The bodies aren't there. They kind of got lost in the shuffle. No, what, what happened was the old guy had a bulldozer. Was it Sparrow? Herman yeah. Sparrow? Okay. Yeah, it was Herman. He had a bulldozer and he liked bulldozing. So he went over there and pushed off the cemetery to, <laughs> to do something. Maybe he was having fun, you know. He liked to push stuff around. So he took the cemetery out and he pushed the stones off in the bushes. This is what happened. Yeah. Then they yeah. built a mound system. Yeah, yeah, and somebody well, found that. Well, started. they were building the mound system, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this piece of a gravestone. Ooh, it was now a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And goats. And so, you know, we tracked around and found pieces of gravestone, and then we went down in the bushes and found the gravestones all in windrows and piles. We we have a yeah. path going to it. Yeah, nice. There's a fence around it. Oh, nice. And uh, it's open. Nice. People yeah, can go and look around. Now, what was that? One of the uh, descendants, let's see, was in the revolution? That uh, was there? Gould. Gould, right. Gould. Called, we built it the Gould Cemetery. Gould, right. Right. Nice. Huh. Uh, oftentimes our destination is you know, snowshoeing or hiking in the winter. We'll just go there and back. Yes. Huh. Huh. It's kind of There's no reason why it can't be there forever. Yeah. Yeah, good. Well, thank you, Elliot. Welcome. Lots of good information. I'm still with the cemetery, even though I'm too darn old. <laughs> uh, Never too old. I'm not giving up. <laughs> yeah, don't think that way. Yeah. Think that you can always do it. And then you'll keep doing it. Even if you think you're too old, you'll be all right. It's when you give up and you say, I'm too old. That's the bad thing. I don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate that. And we probably ought to get to the next item, whatever that is. Uh oh, 6.55, right on time. Discussion finalization of FY 2024 budget development. So I see that we've got a bunch of things that were highlighted as far as budgets um, increases, looks like. Yeah, these are tweaks from the last meeting. Yeah. Um, nothing overly significant. The most significant being what we just discussed, the cemetery expense. Yeah. Some of the, the rest of it was really just some fine tuning or additional information that came in, like Washington County Board Expense. Uh, we received their budget. So, is this where we take up the issue that Deb drew our attention yes. to? That was a yes. cemetery. Oh, no, I mean, part of Deb, I was state. able to print those pages, throw that page out. What's this page that we just got? So Deb, I think, and as she's putting town report together. Sorry, if you're okay. if you're looking at the page that I just sent you, the uh, the fire department numbers weren't looking right to me, so I added them up. And I discovered that although they're showing an increase of $1,044 and they're saying it's 0.55%, they added three lines at the bottom, the salary stipend, the payroll stipend, and the payroll fee stipend. And those three numbers did not get into their formula. So when you add those, it's really an increase of $11,183. And it's a 5.93% increase so i guess the question to you guys is are you going to approve the number or you know and not change your budget or are you going to have to change your budget i guess if if you do the math i don't know it's up to you guys obviously but they don't match they don't work 
Thank you. So which, what number that. are we? 207. No, no, no. Don't even look at the 207. The last column, what they're talking about for FY24. Yeah. 199 is what that column actually adds up to, but they gave you 189.553. That's their number. That's what you voted on. Yeah. And it appeared to be a small increase of about $1,000 or 0.55%, but that's because they didn't capture that $10,139 that's in those three numbers they added this year for the payroll. Yep. Well, I don't think we voted on anything here yet, have we? Well, I think she means when we were at the fire department, we reviewed this budget, but we were speaking total right. numbers. We didn't. So the, the budget that was approved by both. We didn't approve well, it. Didn't approve anything. It, they it wasn't even a meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. It was their meeting. Well, I've, yeah. I've been looking at a file that's called Fire Board Approved, Fire Department Board Approved. And I figured the board was you guys. Well, they've yeah. got to improve it. Their board. Yeah. Their board. Yeah. Yeah. It was presented and we looked at. Okay. It. Well, so it seems to me that you're in a position. You're in a position to either say we budgeted for 189. They're going to have to find the ten thousand dollars in their cash reserves, or you need you need to work a new number into your budget, which is going to ripple down through a couple of places in your budget here. Which I just discovered this before the meeting started, so I haven't actually changed your budget. Gina, to find out what the bottom line would be or how it would affect things. But I mean, clearly, you've got to add $10,139 to your bottom line if you're going to cover it. Do we have to add 10000 or do we have to add a portion? No, no, it's it a, would portion. Be a portion. Because you can see if yeah. you do the math at the top. Yeah. That right. Comes up so Callis needs to know about this. Too. So that's, yeah. So yeah, this Callis will probably. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, you're right. It would only be two thirds of that, correct? For us. Thank you. Yeah, six thousand. Is there time to chat with the 60. fire department before we have to finalize, or is it? Well, we don't have to finalize. To... Wait a minute. Wait. We have to finalize what's going to town reports. Right, but you know, you're doing this a little earlier than usual, and I am usually further along in the town report, and I check every single number and every column of numbers. So I don't care where I get it from, if it's from the trails committee, I make sure the math works. So I was just, you know, going through looking at this fire department thing and thinking, oh, I'll add up the numbers. I always do. And that's how I discovered it. But if you don't approve this tonight, then you'll have the benefit of my having checked all the rest of the numbers in the book before I do approve it. I did find a minute. couple of other, I found a couple of other problems in your actual budget spreadsheet, but I haven't done a thorough review of all the numbers that are going into the book. But we haven't approved a final budget yet. I know. Okay. But we do have to approve what goes in the town report because that deadline's coming right up. At some point, yeah. Well, it's the 20th or something. What goes in I the mean, town report? Deb is the person who sets that deadline. Yeah, I know that, but yeah. I know it's soon. Yeah. Right, but I mean, if, if you can't finalize this tonight because of this being an unknown and you don't know if Callis is going to agree to pay an extra third of, you know, $10,000 divided by three, whatever. Um, you know, I, I can lay out the pages and do all the formatting I have to do and just know that there's a number hanging out there that has to come in at the last minute. I mean, I also can't get the ballot until the last minute because we have to wait for the petitions to come in. So, you know, I, I hate to say, let's do it again in two more weeks, but oftentimes that's, when we do finalize it, actually, because there's always some little thing like this hanging out there. Yep. Yep. And if you are looking to finalize it tonight, I have a couple of other little things that need to be fixed on the spreadsheet that you're looking at for the budget. They're not going to affect your bottom line. Well, actually, one might. Do you want to hear them now? Yeah. Might as well. Okay. I assume you're looking at a printout of the thing right now. What is the thing? The budget. The budget. Okay. Town of East Montpelier town budget. So you're talking about yeah. 2024. Are you talking about the one that's on the website? Um, I'm assuming that's the one that you sent me today, Gina. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a town yeah. Budget. I just, when I, you know, when I look at stuff like this, I just reflexively start checking things or, you know, 
first thing I do is eyeball it. If something just stands out, it doesn't look right. Like the first thing that stood out that didn't look right was um, under revenues. What page? On the first right. page under revenues. Okay. The total fees. The first, you know, the first category is fees. The total fees. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it said the increase decrease was 50%. Clearly that was not correct. That was just picked up from the previous line. It's actually 6.6%. It went up, you know, it went up $2,000. That's not 50%. Right. So it's 6.6 6 .6 it works out to. And there's a couple of, you know, they're really small things, but I would change them in the book. And I guess if I'm going to change them, you should be approving what actually goes in the book. Under reimbursements, total reimbursements went down $1,500. That's minus 0.5%. Okay. And since we're being technical, under total non-tax receipts, yeah, we went well, we uh, it went up four hundred sixty-two dollars. That's point one percent, actually point one two percent. So I'm rounding it down, not even up. Okay. And I'm assuming that it was just a little formatting glitch that the total taxes and the total cash receipts, the percentages there, went to two digits. So I would just change those to be consistent. Unless you want them to be two digits, just you know, round off eight point nine six percent to nine point zero and seven point one eight to just you know seven point two. It says seven point one eight. Wow. Well, okay. And then the only one that would the only one that would affect your bottom line. Oh, so. Just so you know, I've gone through, for the purpose of putting it in the book, I've deleted about a dozen lines because they were blank all the way across. They were just a bunch of zeros. I mean, I can tell you what the lines are, but, you know, they're obviously not germane in this year's budget. They're things like Better Roads Grants, COVID-19 Grants, Green Up, Principal on Delinquent Taxes. We don't show that. We haven't for a while, so I took it out. Stabilization Fabric garage facility renovations. These are all things that were just blank this year. Land conservation fund, not just this year, but I mean, they're blank all the way across in all of the columns because we haven't raised any money for the land conservation fund in years. Um, the RCT was listed here and I took it out because it's got its own warrant article now. So I'm, use, I'm trying to use that space to include the comments because in your last meeting, you said you liked the comments that were off in the right-hand side there. Yeah. They, can be, they can be incorporated into the town report. And one way I'm getting some space is by eliminating these blank lines. And so I was looking at, um, this isn't really a blank line, but somewhere here, there's a background check line. And it says there's one, but the comment was it's one, there's one budgeted for FY24, but there's no dollar amount listed there at all. Seems like if you, if you're budgeting it, you should probably put some dollar amount there. It's under personnel fees. I was actually going to get rid of that line because it's zero all the way across. But then I realized there was a note there that said there's actually one budgeted for FY24. So instead of eliminating the line, it seems like there should be an amount there. What, what page is that on? It's under municipal operations. And okay. um, I think it's the fourth page. Page so, four. That one is not, I don't even see it. It would be under advertising, right? On that next page. Now, under personnel fees, uh, it's not even blank all the way across. It's actually just stuff in there for oh, 500. Personnel fees. Background, background check back is out. over on the right. I think I had page, it in and then I pulled back On out. page four? But, oh, four? Page four, like the fourth line. So you have to look at the, the notes column. Four. Oh, yeah, I see it. Right, under personnel fees. Hmm. Right. So, I mean, if, if you're going to have a note that says there's one budgeted, it seems like there ought to be an amount of money in that column for what you're budgeting it. What what amount are you budgeting? I hope that all of our people stay for fiscal 24, which is why I took that out. So. Yeah, no, I get it. It's mm -hmm. like, it's a very unusual We're going to have another one this year. So right. because yeah. of that sticks, so I would rather leave it out. That's why I took it out. Yes. When I was trying to find anything I could say. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes it. sense. Yep. So are you saying I should delete the line entirely? 
Well, you're going to have an actual there for the current year. So I don't think you can delete the line completely. No, I'm not including my column. The actual for 2020, that's an FY23. I show the actual, I show actual for FY22. You're three, you're three. I yeah. thought your report typically shows actual for fiscal would show the actual for fiscal 23. Well, that be the, Look at the town report. Fiscal 23. No, 6123. All right. There's only so, one. There's only yeah, one. Right. right. But her report can't include that because we aren't at the end of the fiscal year yet. Right. It's not all, I, all I show is the 2022, the first three columns I show, the 2022s, which includes the actuals and the over under. And then for 2023, all I show is what was budgeted. And then I show the, the oh, times for 2024. Yeah, so you can, you can eliminate it. I won't, but you can eliminate it. Exactly. I mean, that's what I was about to do. And then I realized, wait a minute, there's, there's a comment there. And it says there's something budgeted. So I, was, I didn't want to just eliminate the line before I checked. OK, so I'll get rid of that line. Yeah. Um, and then we get down to the fire department. That's obviously going to affect your bottom line. Yeah. One way or the other, unless you decide, you know, you're just going to just go with what you they gave you. <laughs> well, it seems like you better communicate to the fire department yeah. as soon as possible and say they made a mistake. Yeah. Normally, I would send it, normally I would have sent it back to Toby because I got it from Toby and said, your math is off. And then he would have probably had to come to you when he realized that you guys didn't have the correct total. But there wasn't time. I just noticed it tonight. I realized you were about to approve the budget tonight. So I'm jumping over Toby and coming right to you directly, but clearly you're gonna to have to talk to those guys. Yeah, you gotta to talk to those guys and then we'll have to, I mean, we could vote on the new new numbers, right? Because it sounds like that's the number that's gonna be, is yeah, the 199. At least, at least you're two thirds of it. Yeah, what's that? Um, they had sent us the PDF, yeah. We can approve yeah, the new I took, number. I took, a, I took the PDF and I converted it into an Excel spreadsheet because the numbers didn't look right to me and I wasn't going to sit there with an adding machine. So I turned it into an Excel spreadsheet and added it up that way. So I know my numbers are good. I think I would just want to confirm that the intent was in, to include those three lines. Yeah. For the, you know, that it wasn't. Right. You know, the inadvertent. Whatever. Something. Yeah. I'll be like, sure. Yeah. That's right. So I'm not seeing how the numbers on the sheet, either as you amended it, Deb, or as it originally stood, correspond to the lines in our budget on page five for the fire department. So I'm wondering if someone can explain this to me. This, this is for the fire department as a whole, is that correct? This is for the fire department. So the 126, 369 that uh -huh. they show at their top. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Four is the 126, 369 that we have our budget for fiscal right. 24. It's the same number right here. So. Got it. Okay. So that number would be amended. Got it. Another okay. 6,500 yeah. bucks. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's actually $6,759 would yeah. be your share. That'd be added to the 126.369. Yes, correct. I guess we better, like everyone said, I guess we better talk to them first before we do anything. Sounds like. Yeah, yeah clearly yeah. they made a mistake with their spreadsheet because the exact amount that's missing is those three numbers they added at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question for you while we're talking about the fire department. They have changed the order of their columns. I don't prefer this order, and I was about to put it back into the order that we have always run it, which is to put the 2022 actuals first and then have the three lines with the three budgets, the three columns, FY 22, yeah. 23, 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I mean, because this, this is confusing when you show the actual next to the new budget, it looks like they're right. they're lowering the numbers when they're really, they're raising them from what was budgeted. Right. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna change it back to the way it was. I mean, yeah. when I say the way it was, not the way they gave it to us, but the way that we've always run it in the book. Right, that's that's a good catch because it's like, what the heck is this? Why is that yeah, higher? Yeah, oh, that's exactly. right. They've I mean, that's it. that's what that's what alerted me that something was up because I was comparing the FY twenty four to the FY FY twenty two actuals the same way, but this doesn't make sense. And then I realized that it was the wrong yeah. column to be looking at. And then I put into right, right. and changed the order of the columns. And once I did that, I added them up. It didn't work. 
Yep. Yep. All right. Um, I think that's it for the budget from me. I mean, I didn't even add up the total, but I assume you got the right total there because you're going to plug it into your warning next. And the only way you can approve the only way you can approve the warning is if you know what number to plug into Article Three. So this is going to hold up your warning too. Yeah. Yeah. But again, a lot of the work I do has to do with formatting it and making it fit in the page and squeezing in those comments. I assume you want all of the comments that are out there. Why not? Okay. Uh, there's a couple of places where there's maybe three or four lines in a row that say the same thing, and I can just make that a comment for the whole section and just make it one line instead of eight lines. You'll, you'll see. There'll be a proof you can see next time. Yeah, I think that any townsperson reading the report would like those explanatory lines. Yeah. Right. I think that well, we have included some in the past, just not all of them. Yep. You know, when, when it struck me, that they should be included. I've asked if I can include them, and you know there wasn't any state secret about it. So sure, we did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so anyway, what I'm saying is, I can format the warning, I can format the budget, and know that there are a couple of numbers that might change. Article three will change when we have a final number, and the the EM the fire department line will change, and the bottom line will change, and a couple of numbers in between where you have subtotals. But you know that's better than me holding off on doing the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So given that we still have some discussion about the budget, when do you need a final budget from us to integrate it into your report, Deb? I'm going to integrate everything I have for the warning and the budget after tonight's meeting. And I will just have a big note on my page, like a big post-it that says this isn't final until I have the final number to plug into Article 3. And I'll have a final fire department number to plug in any subtotal that it affects and the final number. But everything else will be done and ready to be proofed. And, you know, okay. so that means, that means I can have those numbers to plug in at the very end. Like next time you meet, when do you meet? Well, yeah, we need to talk about that. No, it's going to be two weeks from today. Or no. The, the 30th, two weeks from yesterday. We, yeah, 30th. Did well, we, I guess. Did we, we set that? No, that's not the first Monday of the month. Though. No, no. Right. So no, we have the possibility gonna, of having a special meeting like next week, next Monday, or, and we usually do. You uh, usually do January. meet that. You usually do meet that last Monday in January because yeah. that's the last chance you have to get this kind of stuff to me. And also, I'm waiting for the ballot from the town clerk because she's got to wait for the petitions to come in to put the names on the ballot. Right. So those right. are the last pieces that you know go in place. But everything else should be done and ready to go to the printer by then. Sounds like better have a meeting on Thursday. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm afraid you can't finalize the warning in the budget tonight, so you're going to need to at some point. We'll do it the 30th. Sounds okay. Fun. Yeah. Um, but that does not mean the 30th is the deadline for anything else, because if everything comes in on the 30th, I can't get it to the printer the next day. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> well, that's... I mean, you guys are doing pretty good. There are a lot of other outstanding pieces that I'm going to have to start rattling cages to get. Yeah, not from us, though. No. No. Right, the 30th is a deadline for the petition for the town officials to be voted on by a strictly in ballot. Yeah. But then in case something needs to be fixed in those petitions, there's a few days after that for that. Well, the, so. ballot, the ballot goes in the town report. Right. I mean, it's page three. The town report. Okay, doesn't the town report have the people who are running for the offices? I guess it doesn't. No. Uh, no, okay. All we've done before right. is... That's a good point. At town forum, we had people stand up and introduce yep. themselves. Yep, okay. Well, okay. All right, where are we? So we should discuss the other things that Gina has on her... TA report, select board memo. Mm -hmm. Those is there something you want to talk about, Gina, on those changes? They're relatively minor. Oh yeah, no, no, that's not wrong. Yeah. 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 And it looked like that was going to increase our budget by nine point five percent. 
resulting in a 9% six cent increase in taxes. Yeah. And so as everyone's seen the article in the paper about the school board and the CLA, which we mentioned last time, goes down and school needs more money and CLA because the town, the state gives us less money, so that we have to make up the difference. So it looks like it's either four to 8% that the, looks like the school board budget is gonna be going up. And that's gonna add, what did, what did they say? What was it, four cents or eight cents or six cents? To six cents. Cent. Six cents, yeah. So six, add it to our six, that's 12 cents. Ouch. Ouch. Yep. So there doesn't seem to be much we can do. I mean, she brought up a point about the land conservation fund. We're not putting any more money in that um, because I know that's been something that we've been able to take away or put in according to how our tax rate was looking, but it looks like we're not putting money into it this year. Mm -hmm. There is some money in the fund anyway, so that's not going to be anything that we can fool with. Is there any other numbers that we could take out from a budget point of view? Funds that we're funding or anything that you can think of? Not that I can think of. No. Yeah, I mean, the salary line is our biggest thing. Um, that's really out of our control. Insurance, health insurance is a huge driver. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the ambulance service. Yeah. And then we're flatlining the capital fund. I don't think we're increasing that, mm -hmm. which we did just because of the increase in taxes on all our other expenses going up. I was just wondering if there's anything we could do, but I'm not thinking, I'm not hearing anything. What's the fire? The fire department increase is about six percent. That's what it said here. They had put themselves relatively flat. Yeah. But it appears as though that was not accurate. It's still that not that big of an increase. What's that? Even with the change, it's not. That no. no, it's not. No. Nope. Well, hmm. okay. So, what are we going to do? Are we going to finalize all the figures except the fire department? I mean, we aren't voting on anything tonight, right? No, but I mean, it's just as a general. Feeling in terms what, of what she can unhighlight, exactly. Yeah, yeah and I'm, what we need I'm, to discuss. I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, yeah. So it's mostly that final figure then. And, we'll and just... the you know typos. That yeah, you yeah. Okay. All right. So we can't finalize that. So we've done that item. The next item is finalization of 2023 town meeting warning. This is where um, Carl wanted to bring in the fact that it looks like it's, who's voting on it's a legislature. So VLCT has sent out an email which Rosie drew our attention to and sent on to Gina. Uh, she passed it on to me. Um, so we had laws in place earlier in the pandemic to allow us to have some flexibility about remote meetings and uh, Australian ballot votes. And VLCT has worked with leadership, they say, uh, to get legislation introduced that will address both of those ideas. Um, the, the other one, Sunset in 2022, 
And they said last week that next week, so this week, they were hopefully going to be testifying on it. Uh, so leadership is pushing it through early in the session. So it's possible that it will be available to us as a tool to do something with if we don't want to go back to pre-COVID protocols. Uh, I, I'm i ready to go back to pre-COVID pro protocols. I just emailed Chris Racanelli today and said, hey, if you guys want to put on a, um, a potluck lunch, I'm happy to participate. That would be great. But at least one other town in the area has been going out to residents saying, uh, please give us some feedback on what you'd like to do. And I think it's appropriate to ask people in town, okay, what would you like to do? Okay, so one question on that. Are they just doing this as a one year? The idea from the legislation that VLCT is pushing is that towns would have this as a suite of tool to use in the future. That, so that's what we discussed last year. We were hoping that they would do that and make this a tool that we could use in the future, but they didn't. It was, you know, it was just for the last year. Right. So now that this will be something that we can use in the future for whatever reason. I, I yeah, I mean, I don't I haven't seen the language. I would like to see it tied to some sort of public health finding that it doesn't lead to just you know, ah, we won't be doing town meeting in person <laughs> anymore. What the heck? Uh but but that's just me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've just talked about it before. But anyway, so um are you suggesting that we put this out to townspeople whether they would rather have Australian ballot for all the things at town meeting and not have town meeting in person? This year. Yeah. yeah. That's given given where we are in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Again, that doesn't give us a lot of time because you know, when when do we have to get the warning out? Yeah, so this would be something we'd consider at the meeting that I think we just decided to have on the 30th. Yeah, but it doesn't give us much time to put it out to townspeople. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can. Or, we can get it on front porch forum tomorrow. Yeah. And see what responses we get. That just if we were to change, because right now the warning anticipates that um, we're going to be in person and have certain items, um, articles. That's right. By Australian ballot, so. Excuse me, that'll be another change that we need to make. Right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. What is the request for residents to submit their I'd rather not dialogue be limited to I'd rather people email me. Yeah. Um, as opposed to be compiling it from multiple sources. That so what sense. is your what are your thoughts on that? Because I'm keeping a spreadsheet now about County Road because of the emails I'm receiving for that. So I would add another but I'm not tracking what's happening on front porch forum with that. I'm only tracking I've received emails yeah. um, from people directly about right. that topic. So this would fall in line with that in my mind. So I have a yes or no or conditional spreadsheet on tracking on County Road. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't give us much time. Actually. No. And get that, right now. Yeah. I mean, that's the situation we were in was it last year where we didn't have much time either. But last year we'd already decided that yeah. it was a bad idea to have it just because yeah. the pandemic was That's right. at the yeah. level it was at. That's right. This year, because things have subsided to some extent, it's kind of gone forward with yeah. having town meeting because we're kind of feeling that everybody in town would probably like well, a few people that go would like to have town meeting. <laughs> what, what do board members think? Whether um maybe this is something we think about for future town meetings for yeah. just trying to get do right. outreach and response mm -hmm. within the next two weeks. Yeah, I'm kind of with this proceed. Proceed. Mm -hmm. Well, thinking we because even in, even in two weeks, I don't think we're going to get an accurate view of mm -hmm. the townspeople without a, or more tools mm -hmm. to canvas them. Mm -hmm. You know, front porch form. Okay, you'll have a few people that respond, but you're not really getting the flavor of everybody in town. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're looking for. Yeah, we're looking for town consensus on. Kind of an important issue. Mm -hmm. Do we want it as an article at the town meeting? Chat That's yeah. you know that would be a good thing for a discussion item. You're right. always looking for those. We are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, I, Mr. Moderator? I was, I was fine. Just, <laughs> yeah, just whatever. <laughs> There's a member of the public. Yeah. yeah and a moderator. And our moderator. Yeah, but I think it's a vested interest. So we need to have a vested interest. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
to the moderator salary. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, there's a conflict of interest going on. The, the glory. The glory. Yeah, yeah. That's right. There's the desire to stand in front of some people. Some people. <laughs> who, may, who may be sick. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I'm too clouded by feeling like the world is passing me by. So uh, I would rather have the in-person town meeting, but uh, you know, I might just be uh, too old fashioned, mm -hmm. even though I don't think I'm old fashioned. So uh, on the other hand, uh, Chris Racanelli set something out mm -hmm. about uh, an informal survey about lunch. And I thought, oh, well, I thought, you know, and then all of a sudden in the news, there's another variant. Mm -hmm. And this other variant apparently is very contagious. And all of a sudden, people I know who always wear masks and are very cautious about going places have gotten COVID. So it's like, oh, man, I'm going to be inside in a small place. But if we're sitting around and we're all kind of separated from each other, that's probably fine. But then we're all going to be sitting together for lunch. You know what I mean? So I, it, it, it's hard It's hard to get a sense of it. Um, the COVID numbers seem to be getting under control for various reasons. One of the various reasons is people are wearing masks and not being in crowded places. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I would prefer uh, to have an in-person town meeting just because I like 200-year-old uh, tradition, traditions, you know? Right, yeah. But the world may be passing me by. But, uh, well, you know, democracy evolves, and we've had the conversation before. We've had the conversation before, and you look what happened two years ago in the United States. And then think, wait a minute. Maybe we got something here that's worth uh, hanging on to based on, how, based on what happened mm. two years ago. I think you're referring to January 6th, oh, yeah. 21. But yeah. we're not suggesting that we ban town meeting. We're no, no, no. We're trying to be sensitive to the fact there's still some health concerns with COVID. Yeah. Should we move ahead with in-person town meeting? Should we talk to as many townspeople as possible to find out how they feel? Yeah. You know, that's kind of where we're yeah, at. Yeah, it's a very informal survey on an unofficial website, yeah. you know? And I got back to Chris and said, I've changed my mind on the lunch. I think we had a, ought to have an open town meeting. Maybe we should just forego lunch this year. It's just a little risky, perhaps. So I went from the yes column on lunch to the no call, mm -hmm. just to kind of take one step at a time, kind of. But I might, you know, people might decide they want to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's my long-winded answer to your question. That seems actually like a really good compromise, though. I mean, I yeah. I, I don't think it's that feasible to just kind of stop our tracks now and just oh, no town meeting, but. The lunch does kind of, I mean, that could be COVID yeah. soup. I yeah. mean, that's very <laughs> close and hot. And you're, you're across from each other. Yeah. And you're you're, line, you're yes. sitting at the table. Oh, your mask's on. Yeah. Everybody. Whereas at the meeting, if people could set themselves, you know, we're all right. Playing, but and that, not that many people are at the meeting. Yeah, we would yeah. like more people, but yeah, you know, and there's reasons for that. Spread it, that you know, long and complex, but I will go back to the January 6th situation and, uh, it sort of struck me about what we have. Mm -hmm. Do we? So that raises another question: Are we okay with Chris Racanelli and the potluck people making the decision on the lunch, or do we want, as a select board, want to be steering that decision in any way, mm -hmm. given the health implications? Mm -hmm. I mean, that seems to be a separate activity. And usually we not yeah. we're not part of that. Yeah. yeah. The people that are preparing the food and on the front line are usually the people that are making that final decision. Yeah. People can decide to go or not to go to the lunch. Right. Yeah. Without meeting missing any town meeting. Yeah. Before. But they don't want to go through all the trouble and they also have a budget too to buy yeah. food. Well a lot of people yeah. donate. I mean I always donate. Budget. Yeah. But they buy the stuff the Costco rolls and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. right. So okay. anyway, getting back to the original question. Shall we reach out and see how people feel about having town meeting? They got two weeks to do it. Yeah. And what's the I guess I, I'm not hearing a lot of uh, enthusiasm. Well, I'm, 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 I'm just thinking about it myself. Is yeah. it is it a situation if, that we could just do it, just reach out and just see what happens? Mm -hmm. Or should we just plow ahead with a decision? It would be really awful if you know you went ahead and had it and five people showed up. You know, I mean, could that happen? But I don't know if you're going to gauge it just two weeks ahead of time by sending out an informal yeah. survey either. So no, I know that's the thing. I, 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 yeah. I think we should just go ahead and do it. I think we should go ahead and do it. Yeah. I think we should discourage lunch, but that's a very good point. I mean, I don't know. I'm not feeling we should discourage lunch. 
Okay. Good I mean, I don't think it's our vote, but yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, I think we'll just see. Do you, does somebody want, I mean, I can call Sue and kind of tell her what we had talked about as far as lunch goes and just kind of gauge what she thinks in general. Sure. Do you want me to do that tomorrow? Hey, I guess uh, moderator throws the hand up. Yeah. Uh, you may have seen Chris's note that the survey monkey that he used only allowed him to get back like 10 responses. Right. I think. So, so I don't know what he has gathered yeah. as informal and unofficial as it is. So well, we can reach out. Checking out. I'll, I'll reach yeah. out tomorrow. I'll email you guys and tell you what yeah. that feeling generally was. Okay. But, I, but I, you, you are not conveying the select board's feeling to her. You no, know? no, I'm just going to. Do you think that, well, I mean, this is all public anyway. Do you think that maybe I should probably just say, hey, we were just kind of on the fence about this? I mean, I think that's okay to say this is all on the yeah. camera anyway. Yeah. I'm not going to tell her that. Because I don't think we have like a unified feeling I anyway. Don't think we do. I don't think we do. So. Yeah. Okay. But I think we do have a unified feeling as far as proceeding ahead. With the town meeting. Yes. Let, let me ask let me, the question this way. Okay. Is there anyone who's gotten any feedback from townspeople saying, uh, boy, I think it's too early to go back to in person town meeting? No, I got zero. No, no, no. me neither. Okay. Yeah. Rosie hasn't mentioned anything to me either. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just a final comment. Um, I don't know if it's my efficiency or what. However, the last couple of town meetings. We've come pretty close to adjourning the town meeting right around noontime, mm -hmm. yeah. which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So it might be, yeah, you know, we might be done. And if people wanted to have lunch and not feel like they're going to miss something, and yeah. you know what I mean, or not part of it or whatever, that's that's just something to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is no school board meeting then. No, they they decided they want their own thing. So okay, they got their own. Because that's always been the thing. It's like, right. oh, the school board meeting be after lunch, the school board meetings in the morning. No, we don't do that anymore. They, they no. don't. Yeah. Okay. We no longer have an East Montpelier town school. Yeah, I guess not. That makes right. Sense. It's, okay. Right All right. So I think we should proceed ahead with the town meeting. And then lunch will follow where it happens. Follow where it may. Okay. All right, so we're going to finalize the warnings if we don't have the final figure for the budget. Mm -hmm. And should we add something in for a point of discussion about future town meetings? Yeah. And sure. We can think between now and next time about language to use for it. We don't have to. Somehow. Yeah. And we'll also know whether or not something passed. That's that right. Wasn't anticipated, so. That's right. That will inform our language. Good point. Can I say okay. something about the warning before you move off the warning? Sure. This is Deb. Um, I would love to see the article about the Twin Valley Senior Center moved up next to the article about the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. They are related to each other. I put them on facing pages in the book. And just the way you've got the rural community transportation next to Green Mountain Transit. And then I put those two pages next to each other in the book. And I often try to keep the order of the pages pretty much the order of the articles. So it's easy to follow when you're sitting in a meeting and you're talking about the articles. And it just seems crazy to have, you know, the home health and hospice and the senior center next to each other and then go through talking about two buses and then come back to a senior center again. And it might affect it might affect how much money people want to give to one senior center if they have to discuss it back to back with another senior center, too. You know, in a way, because you want people to vote affirmatively for both. And if they're thinking they're giving too much to the senior center, then they won't give so much to Twin Valley. But whatever. Maybe that was Bruce's logic. All I think it was. Right. Is that the mind gears towards one senior center, then a little while later we work on another one, and people aren't going to be so frugal with them tax dollars and say, oh, we don't want to give any to Twin Valley. Mm -hmm. But even on the floor, Twin Valley's been amended for more money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, whatever. It's probably a move point at this point. Okay, well, I'm still going to leave the two pages side by side in the book, left and right. Yeah. So Article 10 would now be um, the Twin Valley, and Article 11 would be the Home Health and Hospice. That's what right. I mean, you could put Twin Valley first or Montpelier first, but the two of them should be next to each other. You know, from my point of view, just because I'm putting them next to each other in the book as facing pages. But if you decide there's a rationale for not doing it, that's fine. I'm just mentioning it. It doesn't matter. Could maybe even alternate their order from year to year. 
we might be quibbling about nothing. <laughs> well, you know, that's an interesting point, Carl. Are people going to be more frugal the second time they're asked to give to a senior center as opposed to the first time? I don't know if that matters. I don't um, know people support their early, earlier, earlier up, uh, Article 7, we skipped over something else I wanted to mention. In Article 7, I don't know if it's called Eastmont. We're giving twelve thousand dollars to East Montpelier Signpost or East Montpelier Signpost Inc. Is it is it incorporated? I know it's a five hundred one c three. Doesn't that mean it's got to be an ink? And that if we're giving it to the magazine, then at some point it should be italicized. If not the first mention of it, then certainly the second, because in the second one you're talking about six issues of the East Montpelier Signpost, which should be italicized there. But in the first instance, it might be East Montpelier Signpost Inc. I'm not sure because we say, you know, Twin Valley Seniors Inc. and the Trails, East Montpelier Trails Inc. These 501c3s, I think, are all inks, but I can't swear to it. But if not, then let's at least use the ITEL when we're talking about a magazine. And. Yeah. For, for the second like, time it's mentioned because it's actually the it's not the first time is the organization which is not italicized the second time is the publication which is oh okay. yeah yeah that's what it seems like to me too and that's why i thought maybe we we're supposed to be adding the word ink there to kind of help distinguish them distinguish them but it doesn't really matter okay mm -hmm. and then um one more thing with the warning from me or actually two more things on the page where we talk about the town forum the last page there the language that got picked up says that we're going to be discussing the Australian ballot articles, but that's not true. We're going to be discussing all of the articles. It used to be that you could only discuss Australian ballot articles on the floor, or you couldn't, remember, or whatever the heck it was, but now you can discuss all of them. And our wording has been um, discuss the Australian ballot and other warned articles, but it seems like you could just simplify it and say to discuss the articles on the town meeting warning and just take out Australian ballot. Yeah. Yeah. Just those two words could go. Well, wait a minute. We have some articles that are oh, but they're all you know warning. Discussed at a forum and they can all yeah, discuss yeah. Yeah. Some, some of that things Which are only sense. being voted by Australian ballot, but we'll just discuss all of them. Yeah. I mean, this this wording implies that we're not, we can't talk about anything we're going to vote on on the floor at the forum, but right. that's not true. Yeah. And then one more small thing, Article 15, which is the um, tax exemption for the gully jumpers. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the open parens and the word now. Those are left over from the old wording. It was worded that way 20 years ago when the first time we voted on it because they had just come into ownership of it, but now they've owned it for 20 years. And that parentheses didn't even have a close parentheses in it. It should just get rid of the open parentheses and the word now, and it would be much better. Um, looking at Article 14, Funding Request Study Committee recommendation for appropriations to worthy organizations. That's not how the article the preface to the article, um, we, do we need worthy in there? Or to identify the organizations? Are you looking in that form? Um, yeah, I'm looking on the forum under B, Article 14. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that worthy makes sense. I, I think it does, too. I, I, I thought it was a little perky, but it yeah, was yeah. in there. So. Right. It sounds like you're making a joke or something. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I uh, thought it was... <laughs> I, I mean, these are summaries of the articles that we're seeing in the forum warning. But worthy, but so I, worthy it, is implying, it, but it does have several implications. Yeah. One is these are organizations that have been vetted by the study. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that does have some connotations that mm -hmm. are not negative, you know, because mm -hmm. you're trying to set these organizations apart from people that may have applied that you did not um, approve, mm -hmm. but- But there know. aren't any. All the organizations that applied were approved, so- Yeah, so they we were this year. 
Yeah. It's not always been the case, but yeah. Um, yeah. You want to put non cruddy? <laughs> <laughs> the, the funding request committee themselves. To, uh, yeah. The funding request committee refers to them as local nonprofit organizations. Right. Identified organizations of certain organizations, you know, where the yeah, no, it does it's have. not very precise or accurate. What's that? It, it doesn't quite accurately describe, yeah, you know, recommended organization. Recommended or that would even be better if you have to have anything. I think just yeah, two organizations would be fine. Yeah, I think less is more. I would probably just take out worthy and not put anything there. That'd be my vote. I'm fine with that. You could you could say nonprofit boards. Yeah. They all nonprofit. I, 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 I don't want to go out on a fence. I agree. Uh, yeah. Go out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be straddling a fence. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Um, if we're having the parenthetical in Article 15, we need to close the parenthetical. No, but we're getting rid of the parenthesis and the word now. You're right. Apologies. We're getting rid of what? Now? The entire paren. Yeah, actually, there you go. Oh, okay. Just four characters are leaving. The open parens and N-O-W. That's it. Yeah. That's what I'm suggesting. And a space. And if you decide to move the Twin Valley seniors up near the Montpelier Senior yeah. Center, obviously we would fix it on this page too. But it sounds like you're not intending to do that, correct? I made a note to do it. I, I thought we were intending to do it. Yeah. I've made a note to do it, so. Okay, well then do it on this page too, obviously, so they correspond. I have arrows drawn in both locations. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Are we putting ink on your sign posts? I'd have to find out if they are. I, I'm not yeah, sure if they're not sure if we're okay. the trouble. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we're done with the warning. I think so. Yeah. Oh, we have to look at the psych board report at the next um so this we will likely finalize at the next meeting as well because the budget is in here and if mm -hmm. that changes it will change that paragraph mm -hmm. the only other change since the last time you saw this was that the municipal assistant position is once again open mm -hmm. so i still have reference that jessica joined us yeah jessica's leaving us and yeah. <laughs> we are seeking long live jessica <laughs> Another municipal system. Yeah, so we'll add that in. Yes, so that is those would be amended. Um, did you mean to have a space between um the seven paragraph on the second page? The town will be able to move forward. Oh yeah, look at that. Interesting. It probably Here. broke across the pages. Yeah, previously. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Just so you know, when I put this into the page in the book, there's a little bit of room for a photograph. So if you decide there's something more you need to say, there is space. I thought one option could be a picture of the new town office. See the new staff. staff? Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I haven't mentioned that to them, but I, I did think that. <laughs> so. Good idea. Do you have any pictures? No, <laughs> we can take one. <laughs> All right. Well, Terry, I have a picture of Rosie behind her new desk because. Terry Allen takes nice pictures. Yeah. You, you yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. They have really nice pictures. Uh, okay. So. I guess we're done with the report for the moment. Town Treasury report. 
Um, nothing. Thank you, Michael. Bye. Thank you, Michael. Um, Michelle was able to finish the November report. She did find the issue she had that she mentioned at the last meeting with the uh, bank reconciliation. And she also completed the December. I mean, nothing really extraordinary of note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How the checks going then? Big checks or whatever it was. They are still coming in. They are. Oh, At what sort of rate? Um, I'm not sure how many were today. I didn't. Yeah, but over the last week. Uh, they were. They're daily. Um, but a handful. Michelle of showed me one today because someone. It was a full on handwritten check. This. She'll sometimes show me the more comical ones. Um, but uh, <laughs> well, just a complete lack of effort to even attempt to steal by uh -huh. you don't even type the check. Uh -huh. Um, oh. this person actually had. Then it was from them to them too. It was very interesting. Tony, he's not there. Was not even on his call, but huh. our numbers are at the bottom, so it goes uh, to the bank. Um, oh. But um, no, it's still continuing. Oh. So, but not dozens a day. Um, I, I'd have to look at yeah. how many. I I mean, I think last week it's probably a good four to five at least. You did. Well, mm -hmm. wow, easy. The only way out at this sense. point, the only way out at this Probably point is for the bank account to close and yeah. open a new one. No, I think so. Okay. So when is that on your radar to talk about the bank, a potential well, bank change? Once we get a new person hired and yeah. get through. Yeah, get through all this stuff. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Can I, just, may I just mention with regard to the bank reconciliations, the auditors, specifically Ed Deegan, uh, reviewed all of the bank reconciliations monthly for the fiscal year 2022. We did that in order to fix the material weakness that we were being done by the external auditors last year. And then we were kind of waved off because we were told that the personnel was changing, who had check signing and stuff like that, and it was going to be taken care of in-house. But apparently that wasn't happening, and so Michelle has asked us to step back in again, so Ed is going to meet with Michelle and do the reconciliations for 2023 as well, unless we hear otherwise. Michelle. I mean, we have to do, we, we look at them anyway at the end of the year, but now we're doing them monthly in order to, again, stay on top of that material weakness thing. Yeah, the material weakness came about because the external auditors assumed that the internal auditors were reviewing the bank. Essentially, it, it has to do with check signing the, yeah. the people reviewing the yeah. reconciliations all were signers on the account, exactly. which right. is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so we no longer have the municipal assistant yeah. as a signer on the account. However, had not yet, Michelle was just about to start changing dress. Now we're starting over with that um, for just to review those. So Michelle asked if the internal auditors could do that. But again, that, that material weakness was because that was not being done until the end of the year, which is not an appropriate from a control perspective. Right. So that Michelle reached out to ask if the town auditors would review them. And then the intent is when the new municipal assistants, and we're actually trying to get someone with some financial experience. We actually have an interview tomorrow with someone that does have some accounting experience um, that has, who probably could take that on pretty quickly. Um, so that then we would, we prefer to keep it in house because we don't really want to rely on the town auditors to do it. So we're not chasing them down to, to review those. Yeah. We know it's just happening every month and yeah. it's done. Yeah. Yeah. So I wish I had seen this when Elliot was here, but uh, I don't know if you have any insight as to why the cemetery commission hasn't asked for any of the money that's appropriated for it yet, halfway through the fiscal year. I'm not sure what that process is, so I would have to find out yeah. how that has happened. This well, it, it is a little bit of, I'm not going to say an issue, but because we do the payroll, mm -hmm. there isn't all the money that you think is there. 
Yeah. Because we're doing we're doing it fifteen thousand dollars to put the payroll. So even though it's said twenty thousand dollars is in the budget, nothing's been expended yet, then somebody well, we really have expense. it is. It's okay. in a different fund. It's not yeah. a general fund. This I is see. something Michelle and I are just not it's okay. very hard to sometimes piece these puzzles together. Okay. So she and I actually did discuss this, okay. I think just last week, um, wondering how this process works. So but a lot of times that's her digging into the general ledger to try to determine how journal entries were done in the past. Uh, so we don't really have anything that I'm trying to walks remember through how the process. It was done differently because it was a commission. In the past, they we made a committee. Yeah. And we were giving him a chunk of money, but I right. remember how the payroll right. was being done because I always remember doing the payroll. Okay. So the payroll is, I believe, it is going to, there's a separate fund in the general ledger that is accumulating the cost for yes. the cemetery. Right. What I don't know is how the general fund funds that fund. So these are some of the nuances that we just, we don't have anything to go on. So we have to try to put the puzzle together ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I asked her if she knew how this worked and she did not. So but isn't it just an accounting thing? It would just be a journal entry. Yeah. That's all. Okay. And that's what I think yeah. I'm going to guess is what's done in the past. No, I think that's what it was. Yeah. You would record an expense in the general fund. That so that, that kind of gives you an answer, though. There isn't all that money there. No. Right. It's, right. it's sort of there, but it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So you asked your question. In the town treasury report, are we done with? I think so. I am. Okay. Sounds good. Um, certificate of highly, highway mileage. That is basically year ending February 10th, 2023. <laughs> that is, that, that is the way they send. Yeah, that is the form <laughs> that was sent by the state. So, so did um, no change. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I did check this with Guthrie and the property. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's basically. Past two roads, past three roads, state highway road. The length of the roads stay the same. Past four, legal trail. And do we need a motion? I don't remember that we do. But I don't we... believe you had a motion last year. I mean, you all signed it. Yeah. So um, you have a you have a stack of stuff here for all your signatures. Okay. So we just got to pass around sign. Mm -hmm. Is that the one we're saying? I don't know. You can sign that one. Oh, I can sign it. Okay. I'll sign it right here. You'll be signing the next ones. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Oh, request for reimbursement. So in the process of doing the grant information, I had told Seth I wasn't going to look at this probably until after we come through the town report. However, in the process of doing the grant report for the town report, I dug into all of the detail for County Road, worked with the state to determine what we needed to do. These are two of the total of four grants mm -hmm. related to County Road. Uh, this is the Morse uh, culvert replacement and the paving. This is about 300,000. We have another just over 80,000 in grants. However, I need to work with the external auditors Thank before you. I submit those reimbursement requests because I need to check with them on the accounting. We have two grants funding that fund part of the North of Barnes Road culvert replacement. I need to work with the external auditors on the accounting for that before I can finalize this grant reimbursement because there's it's all accounting, but how we record everything in the general ledger, I need to make sure aligns with how we request for the reimbursement so that we don't have to reclassify a whole bunch of stuff in the external auditor yeah. system. Yeah. So I've already emailed the external auditor. He emailed me back and said, very good question. Yes, we need to talk about this. Um, so because it affects where we're matching our revenues and our expenses. So just so you know, that's why there's two more grants out there. However, this is the lion's share of our funding for County Road. So I would like to get these submitted as soon as possible so that we can get our almost three hundred thousand dollar so we got to sign that we want them yes there you, go. you have if you would like to see the full packages you do have the full packages in there with um the you have a this center or the front stack that you have there set it, if you want to see the invoice copies and whatnot you have the full packages there that actually show the invoice copies but as well the ones you're supposed to sign 
it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's the same document. Oh, okay. I'm going to scan the one you all sign, so and attach it. But yeah. if you would like to see the invoice copies and all of the detail that will go to the state, it is there. Yeah. So this says that we swear to the correctness of standard language in Vermont to swear or affirm. So I'm just adding that to this. Okay, so we're not signing the town meeting no. warning. No, it's not quite done. And we've already passed around a certificate of highway mileage. Yep. And then that is the same form. So if you want to see the invoice copies, yeah. they're there from Pike um, as it relates to the paving and then yep. a number of invoices as it relates to the culvert replacement, but primarily the large largest funds were to Blue Mountain excavating and prepping. Okay, so that's the invoices. If you want to look at that, we've already signed the cover copy. Okay, and this is the paving. Paving was easy. Sorry, I just need to do it. I wonder why it says Fairhaven Castle. Why does it say that? The customer town of East Mount Fair Project, Fairhaven Castle. Because they Copied and didn't I don't know what completely amended. Okay. I would guess. Yeah. But he's done okay. things like that in the past. Oh, you have. And, okay. <laughs> All right. So, so then we're done with consideration of county road grant reimbursement requests. That's mm -hmm. what they are. And then, okay. Now we, we get to um we technically good. That is if you want to see a copy of okay, the yeah. So we don't sign up. No, I have to sign it. I need to go back to sign it. I'm not sure. No, I only have to sign that. Yeah, no, I, I realize that now. But I passed around to the you might want to know what you Well, just in case you want to see that. That include I didn't I like to put my name. I didn't want to copy all of that. Right. So yeah, yeah. But if you wanted to see the copies of the invoices, um, discussion on town management in light of COVID 19 is the next agenda item. Um, I think we've had a lot of discussion already, but that's now stopped in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but you're silent on the subject at the moment. Uh, at this meeting, already, at this meeting already, we've had a lot of discussion. Okay. Meow, yeah. Seth. <laughs> No um, okay, so the next thing is our, our forms, which I'm looking at right now, and then the town administrative report. If you want to get efficient, you can start talking. If you, can, if you want to wait in silence while we sign, no. I'll have to. For TA report, unfortunately, we will be over in our computer equipment costs for the current year because I need to replace my laptop. Yeah. Um, it decided to die at around 10 o'clock wow. this morning. Well, it works a little bit, but you can only do one thing at a time on it. <laughs> so not very efficient for someone that likes to multitask and had a lot of things open at once. So um, really, in the end, it's not new. Thing. I mean, if it were, it would still be under warranty. Um, but it um, also really was, it's a very basic machine that was purchased for the purposes of Zoom. Okay. Um, RB Tech recommended replacement for many reasons. One, because it appears to be a hardware failure somewhere in, inside the machine. Mm -hmm. And two, because it really wasn't meant for, it wasn't purchased for the purposes of everyday use. It was meant to run Zoom meetings. Um, so it's not a very powerful machine. Which is probably why I said it. Um, the next thing is February 20th is the, well, it will, it's the next regular, or not the next, it's the second uh, February regular meeting time. That is President's Day. Oh. So in light of our moving this meeting for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I thought I would ask the select board if we would like to keep that meeting on February 20th or shift that to Tuesday of that week for. Well, it seems like we can move it to Tuesday. Yeah. 
So is that is that I'm sorry I missed part of the conversation. Is that an office holiday? Yes. Oh yeah, well, I mean, a little bit. But the other um so the meeting that we would have would be this six. We After still have the, the six. I yeah, yeah, I'm not proposing any change in that. No, no. So I we mean. have the six. Then we would have the uh, the thirtieth, the sixth, and then it would be the twenty first. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. That would because I don't think the DRV is that they need. They wouldn't be that meeting at that day. time anyway. They're on the first Tuesday. First Tuesday, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty slow. Anyway. I mean, if you all wanted to have it on Monday, it's fine with me. No, no, I, no, no. We. Questions on the on the warrant. What shoe mushroom? What shoe mushroom? What's that? Which one? Am I just not reading it? Jordan Equipment, five hundred fifty dollars and seventy two cents for a shoe mushroom. Uh, look at the other. Okay. And then the other thing was. Probably a piece of equipment. Okay. Yeah, it's that's a weird. Yeah, I I always think people are making fun of me when they put things like that. <laughs> no. But if you go to the invoice, you know, I'll figure it out. And what if you can't get that? And the credit card payment process. Why do we have charges for credit card processing? That is um that is the way the bill I'm thinking of the right one. Oh, where we pay that bill. Oh yeah, that is where M and T, that is the name of the vendor. That is the name of the credit card for the town credit cards. Okay. That is that is M and T. That's the payment of the credit card bill for oh the payment of yeah, bill. that's it's just not it's okay. a very weird that's yes. the okay. name of the vendor. That's gotcha. the name of their thank you. The way they want that's, to check address. Yes, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. That's not like the one percent that they tack up. Oh no, 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 no. That's actually the that's actually the bill. Yes. Um, oh. Do I really need to know what a shoe mushroom is? Everybody said what a shoe mushroom is. Oh, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious too. Yeah. What is a shoe mushroom? Shoe mushroom. Is it have you found mushroom? And have you found it out? You, you've got an invoice. It's just it's, it's buried in there, and I gave up. So I well, it's a mouse paper. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Amy Parker will probably. Um, as opposed to a cast mushroom shoe, um, from Jordan Equipment Company, um, description shoe mushroom is TWH two. Cast mushroom shrew, three quarter inch bolts, six inches on center. Does that help us? Just fly it on. If Guthrie were here, he would be here. And five of them. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like something to throw into a mad lip. Yes. <laughs> so basically, it sounds like a shoe, shape of a shoe that goes on the bottom of a piece of equipment. And what the shoe does is protects the equipment from wearing out. So you bolt this thing on with bolts, and then you replace it when it gets worn down. So I suspect it's the shape is a mushroom shape on the bottom of a town plow oh, or okay. some piece of equipment like that. Okay. Because that's what a shoe is. A shoe yeah. is a protective device on any piece of equipment and wears any Yep. That's it's replaceable. So I you know, I would just assume it's a shape. Okay. Because it got it's bolted on six inches on center, and I know the shoes that I couldn't that's how they bolt on. Okay. So. And what are the um payments for Kevin Smith sports or reversible B ball jersey recreation? Okay. That's a record. I'm gonna pass okay. this back to you. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So. And next on the TA report, if you are all aware, but um, Jessica's last day is Thursday, January 19th. The job is posted. We are receiving applications. Yeah. Um, I put it on Front Porch Forum. It's on Indeed. Um, we were pretty successful with these formats previously. Um, we do have one interview with a, a candidate that came through that um, we're going ahead. We, as we get qualified applicants, we're going to go ahead and reach out and um, start interviewing. This was one that one of the first ones, if not actually the first one that came in. So, um, and it's very well qualified. So we're meeting with her tomorrow. Um, so, and I think a couple more came in today, but I have not yet looked at those. Uh, Denise 
uh, Sparrow is going to come in on Thursday and she's going to help us with some special projects while we're without someone, um, which will actually be quite helpful because there are things with Denise's departure that now Michelle and I know a little bit more. So there are some things we'd like to ask her about some processes that we're a little fuzzy on as well. So um, we'll be actually quite helpful. So she will be in on Thursday. Uh, oh, that's good. Next, I have, I would like to identify a meeting where we will discuss the county road, the request to close county road mm -hmm. for future events in 2023. I am getting, there has been chatter on Front Porch Forum, which has resulted in me receiving emails, which I'm actually thankful for, um, with residents providing feedback, um, primarily on the negative um, to to this idea, uh, at least from what I'm receiving. Um, yeah. I have one yes, seven no's, and three that were kind of more conditional or comments um, for the select board, select board to consider. I would just like to identify when we would like to have this discussion because I would like to just put a, something off our porch forum well in advance so that people can continue emailing me if that word is not out. Um, so that we can get good feedback about this idea. And I am communicating with BLCT as well, um, who have yes pointed out that there may be some liability considerations that the town needs to consider with this, um, because unlike, and this is something I've thought of, so something for you all to think about is um, when other events occur in town, there are organizations that are insured that are hosting those events. This mm. would not be that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the insurance responsibility may potentially fall back to the town mm -hmm. um, if something were to happen. So I'm still working with the LCP on that. Um, I honestly emailed them yesterday to start the dialogue because I didn't have this high on my radar, but when I was getting quite a few emails on it. I decided to go ahead and reach out to them and um, I responded. So someone responded to me today. I responded back um, providing Larry Gilbert's um, request and any additional clarity. And so I will bring that to you as well. Yeah. I think that the word on front porch firm has been, I haven't seen anybody in favor of this yet. You there have been a couple. Have there? There have been a couple okay. um, that were in favor, but I've only had one emailed and I would really prefer people to email. email and yeah. that's the reason because I don't going to front porch forum and right. trying to fish yeah. through that. I mean, I could yeah. overlook one. I, I don't, yeah, I don't really like that being our official of means of communication. So um, that's why I want to ask people to please email me because that's how, or call me. That's fine too. Um, but I'm, I've started a spreadsheet of the names that have communicated with me, what kind of their vote is. And then of course, I, some of them have been actual letters addressed to the select board. So some of them are very short and sweet. Please don't do it again. Um, or literally what okay. some of the emails are. Um, so, uh, but some of them are more and some of them are include some other ideas or considerations for you to take into account. Um, okay. So I just wanted to look at some future meetings and decide when, whether it's the February 21st, February 6th. February is generally pretty slow, like agenda wise anyway. So. I mean, the, the other possibility is for us to make our decision in March and add this as another discussion item for town meeting. And that would uh, motivate more people to come to town meeting perhaps. Although the point could be moved if you know, I don't think that we want to ensure that, I mean, when that you, you yeah, know, I don't know. He, he kind of, the, the, the response, I'm assuming he was one of the attorneys, because yeah. I'm going to guess this went to the attorney side. Um, yeah, said that just high, he was aware of the previous event and said that, yes, I mean, it, you know, and he pointed out exactly that what I thought, which is it's, it's not being run by an organization right. that holds insurance. Therefore, we probably wouldn't want to assume that as a town, I wouldn't think. So I don't know if we would probably want to bring it to people at the town. What about the 21st, February 21st? Is that meeting? Or that sounds fine. Yeah. Well, I guess I don't understand your logic there. It is. What is because that if, you, if you talk about it and people are all gung ho, yeah, yeah, I think we should totally have it. Then we can't do it anyway because. So you probably don't, as a town, want to assume the liability. Well, then we, I mean. And you have to go back and tell them, like, sorry, we can't do it anyway. Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th that's a possibility. I mean, the point is to get whether we do it only at a select board meeting or at a select board meeting and at town meeting uh, is that we're just getting input from people in the town. And uh, we, we have to make the decision based on 
you know, all the factors that are available to us. So you're saying that even if, if they, they came back to us and said, yeah, you're totally on the hook liability wise, which it kind of sounds like it, like you would still say, well, that's an input, but we still might do it. If a hundred people said, uh, yeah, we absolutely want to do this and nobody said no, then yeah, okay. I mean, people are saying that okay. that's what the town wants to do because we're liable for all sorts of things right now. No, that's true. Well, I, I, my recommendation is that we have a meeting on, we discuss it at the 21st. Mm -hmm. Just want to allow us enough time to figure it out, <laughs> get some input from the yeah. FCC. I agree. February 21st, I agree. Yeah, I just want to get is the way I go so I mean, come to any. Well, I mean, if, I should. If he, I mean, right. yeah. yeah. But we'll have more information from the VLCP at that point. We should. Yeah. I mean, I got a email yeah. today. So we came in about midday today. So they, and I responded this evening. So um, I'm hopeful to have additional information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. And for what it's worth, uh, when I had Larry on my radio show last week to talk about it, then we got three calls. Uh, two of them, I believe, were from East Montpelier residents saying, yeah, go for it. And one was from a Plainfield resident saying, boy, I wish people in Plainfield would do this. Hmm. Well, it's, it's the opposite from what I'm getting in email. Yep. So I've only had one yep. positive. And well, I've yeah. gotten another, I think, two since I did this, so that would be nine no's. No, we're still working with small samples. Yeah. Okay. Sounds a little shaky to me at this point. The liability sounds a little unnerving. Yeah, it was. I was so not surprised, but uh, yeah. So please find out what that means in terms of liability. Well, it's because it, it, it's it, because it, like when Mamba hosts a, a bike event. They are an insured organization. Right. So that was his point. You so he asked me, well, are you is the group wanting to put this on an insured organization? Right. So that's the thing. I don't know that we have any other circumstance where the town like agrees for somebody to use a trail that is not right. an organization like that. This right. is just so I think that that was one of the clear defining differences that mm -hmm. he mentioned in his email to me was that we she are knows. not working with an organization that's insured. So just out of curiosity, yeah. I, I just want to say that um, when I was running Rally Day, we weren't any kind of organization, but the town basically covered us. They took us under their umbrella, so it is did possible you, to do it that did way. You the road though, and yeah, kind of. Really? Okay. Well, in front of the school. Well, kind of. Kind of. You didn't really close the road. Like there was that little parade in front of the school. Well, from yeah. the intersection down to the school, we kind of took over the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it closed? Stop traffic. We didn't oh. officially close it, but we did stop traffic. Mm -hmm. So, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's like when we question, when we had the when we had the what that means is um, what what does it mean if the town assumes liability? Yeah, I don't know. In terms of I our insurance, I would probably have to reach out to then VLCT yeah. on the insurance side. Yeah. I know what and if if I don't even know how it would. If it would even fall under the insurance, I'm not sure. That could be outside of our parameters and our policy. So I don't I don't know yeah. the answer. So what if um just to put it out there, what if Larry Gilbert and friends formed an organization and then got insurance to cover the liability aspect? Yeah, is that a, is that a possibility? I mean, I don't really know. I'm just I, looking for a that, that could probably work if they wanted to go to all that trouble, but I think that. A lot of people are saying that, I mean, just people I've talked to and stuff like the six times thing, like that's not even special anymore. That's just excessive, you know, like if you did it once or twice, like once in the spring and once in the yeah. fall or something, that right. would be really neat. But, right. like, you know, six times, mm -hmm. right. A regular event in a town road. Right. right. Okay, so I think, but, I think it's important to get that information from the LCTs. What could it do to our well, it's all, it's all important. All factors we have to take in consideration, I think, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, other business? Um, so just the meeting schedule. Just in the meeting schedule, Deidre, you've heard it a bunch of times. That it's not in the PA report, but we are meeting on February 6th as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're adding January 30th. January 30th. January 30th and February 20th becomes February 21. Yep. Yeah. yeah so there isn't, that's 
six is not on our. Yeah, I don't know. And it's just okay. it was it was a morning. And so the twenty <laughs> first is a new post. Yeah. Twenty one. Yeah. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. John is. I'm not saying. Are there other? Is there other business? <laughs> Why are you saying it? Because you didn't ask if there was other business. I might have. I just did you say did other business. Did I Turn up the hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm thinking. All the favor, please. Hi. Hi. Far away from here. Hi. Hey. You got your car right here.